it should be working. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, actually work. We were testing it, but it's not. So the previous one, did it record? I don't think so, actually. So. Do you need it or you don't need I don't, I don't need a microphone just to amplify the sound because it's a small group. Okay. But the, I'm just wondering, because all the, the screencasts are recording, yeah. Yeah. and then it's not recorded. Probably. Let's go test the guy. Yeah. Uh, and screen. Uh, Here it is again. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Do you have a laptop to connect? <coughs> Sorry? Do you have a laptop to connect? Yeah, I have a laptop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Too. No, okay. So the reason why is because this room is so small, if they had it from a couple of speakers, uh, it would be a bit overkill. However, it is been up through the recording by now. Uh, oh, right, no, no, it, it is on, it's just not um, set to come out. But it does come out with the recording, so you just need this on the table or something, but it would be much better for um, what is this? Yeah, it's a bit odd giving someone a mic and it not working, but actually. <laughs> oh, hello. Okay, that's interesting. Did you take this one for lunch? The adapter, sorry. Alright. Hey, how are you? Oh, yeah, fine. Yeah. Oh, was that, was that mine? Uh, the adapter or not? No. Oh, no, 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 sorry. No, oh, were you in here before? Yeah, that's me. Did it record? Last one. It should have, yeah, we have recordings we're doing. Oh, right, yeah. I don't know if this was working properly. Yeah, Yeah, I was just explaining because it's not safe to actually project anything on the speakers because oh, it's just a small room, it'll be. Yeah, cool. yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's for the recording mostly. Right. So it'll be a much better audio quality if you do. Cool. Um, but you need this for the duration? Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, for, for, this, for this talk, yeah. No worries, I'll leave it so with you. So that was Drupalese Marketing, and I need the other presentation now. That's Drupal 5 Benefits of Gardening Organized. Yay. Hey. Hey. And there was no issues the last time? Sorry? There was no issues with the technology last time? No. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, Just good. get this to PC for you. Yeah. Adapter. I came in here thinking it would be here and it wasn't. So yeah, oh no, that's right. Uh, two seconds. Two seconds. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. Uh, it, it, it it's coming back, don't worry. And it's gone, yeah. There we are. Fantastic. All right. Anything else or are you okay? I'm okay. Brilliant, I'll leave you to it. Yeah, thanks. Talk yeah. it all. Minutes and five minutes, it's like that's right. Ten minutes, I have to wait ten minutes? Yeah. No, and oh. it's missing ten minutes to the end. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Because we need to do it. Okay. Yeah, all right, all right. Thank you, sorry about it. Cool. It's red now, <laughs> instead of. <laughs> Try to that you can even leave it on the tables, and it's gonna be red. Now it's green. It's green. Mara.
Yeah. Oh. Hello, good to see you again. start. Um, some of you have seen my previous presentation about why Drupal needs marketing. Um, this presentation is about the five minutes fits to get organized as a local Drupal community. Um, my name is Michel van Veldi. I am the co-founder of OneShoe, a digital agency from the Netherlands. Um, I uh, started uh, with Drupal 12 years ago, uh, over 12 years ago, uh, and, was the, well, and was one of the co-founders of the Dutch Drupal community. So I've been around for a long time. Uh, for those of you who were not here at the last presentation, I'm not a coder. You know, I don't code. I'm a marketeer by background. I fell in love with Drupal over 12 years ago. Um, so I'm going to tell you about what the benefits are to get organized as a local Drupal community. Um, and first we go into a bit of history. Um, the slides are, there's a lot of text on the slides, and I've done this on purpose, so it can be distributed easily via the internet, so people can read afterwards, you know, what the story was. Um, okay, so in the Netherlands, um, on 16 November 2007, the first Drupal gem was organized. Um, it's like a Drupal camp, but then only in a day. Um, it's basically uh, uh, people from the Drupal community, came, they all came together uh, to talk about Drupal. And actually it was a small classroom with some pizzas and they were sharing ideas around you know, how to uh, uh, well, basically grow Drupal and adoption of Drupal. Um, I <coughs> attended the second Drupal Jam and that was at a university. And there was about 12 people sitting there, 12 or 15 people, and a stack of pizza and boxes. You know, they're discussing about Drupal. And suddenly this guy comes in, in a suit, and he says, yeah, I'm here for the Drupal jam. You know, I found it somewhere on Drupal.org, and uh, it's, a, it's supposed to be a jam, but I can't find it. He says, well, it's those guys there with the pizza boxes. He says, who are you? And he says, well, I am um, an IT manager from KPN, which is one of the largest... Uh, telecom com uh, telecommunication companies in the Netherlands. I said, okay, you know, if those big boys are interested, maybe we should professionalize the way we organize the Drupal Jam. So the next time I started organizing the Drupal Jam, I created a roll-up banner, like, okay, here we are, you know, and I created classrooms, actual classrooms, and breakout sessions, and we had presentations. So, and we left the pizza boxes for afterwards. You know, and it means I started professionalizing it um, and started growing uh, adoption of the Drupal Jam as well and uh, promoting it properly th through other channels than only Drupal.org. Um, eventually, the Drupal community, you know, with a whole lot of help from the community, grew to now over 500 people in the Netherlands. Uh, and that's quite substantial, quite big. Um, but as the events grew, um, money was needed for locations. And, you know, I had my bank account and, you know, okay, so I decided, okay, we need some sponsors, you know. And there were send the sponsors were basically sending money to my private bank account and I didn't feel comfortable with that. It's like, okay, this is community money which should be given back to the community and should not be in my personal bank account. So I wanted to create a separate bank account for the community and came up with the idea to get organized as a, a local association. So we set up uh, the local association <coughs> that was organized. Um, so on Friday, March 2010, the Dutch Drupal Association was officially announced. And let me see, this is the first Drupal Jam, you know, sitting there with uh, pizza boxes and stuff. And then we got the roll up banner and it grow even bigger and eventually we had large venues, you know, with Dries at the time attending, you know, the, the local events and the local coach prints and stuff. 
uh, before he was heading out to the United States. Um, so the local association was founded and it was organized by other Drupal community members and they were only organized in the Drupal Jam. And I thought, okay, there's more to be done. You know, if we want to grow the developer community, if we want to reach out to new potential clients, we need to do marketing. Um, but, and I addressed the local community, the, the local association, like, okay guys, we need to do marketing. He said, well, marketing, you know, we're just organizing the event, you know, we're, just doing, we're here for the Drupal Jam and that's it. So, okay guys, but we need to create more adoption, you know. And so I decided to get organized from a marketing and business perspective and I founded the uh, Dutch Drupal Business Foundation. And there was a bit of a shocker for the community because, hey, well, we have our, we have a local association and now you have a second association purely for business reasons. The interesting bit was is that the um, local companies, the local agencies, the Drupal agencies were like, hell yeah, cool, so now we can start promoting ourselves. So we got around 35 agencies to chip in money and suddenly we could promote ourselves at large tech events. So there was Adobe with a booth and there was Cycler with a booth and suddenly we had a huge roll-up banner. And I still remember one, you know, the guy who made it, made it a bit too big. It was a roll-up banner. It was about three meters high. So it was, it was a huge one, you know, and we had to stabilize it before tipping over. But our booth was bigger than Sidecar and Adobe, you know, and they got scared. It's like, okay, now this is scary. You, you have an open source community and suddenly you are commercially, you know, uh, promoting yourself. You know, it's never been done before. So that was, it was really cool. Uh, and suddenly we had a lot of clients, you know, uh, uh, enterprise clients, large clients coming to the booth uh, talking about uh, uh, Drupal. And how we did it, I'll explain later because you probably wonder, like, okay, how do you do this commercially? But I can explain this later. So we introduced the, uh, what we call Stichting Drupal Bedrijf Nederland, which is the Dutch Drupal Business Foundation in English. And we were re really happy to set it up as the, uh, uh, from a uh, legal perspective, we were signing the contracts and stuff. And we got a bank account and money came in. So what we did, actually, um, we knew there was a demand for new professionals, there was a, uh, um, <coughs> a demand for growing the pie, and I gave a talk in the Netherlands about the blue ocean and red ocean theory. I don't know if you know the blue and red ocean theory. Uh, it's a theory, in short, um, you have a blue ocean, there's one shark swimming in that blue ocean, and there's a lot of fish out there, so the shark is the Drupal agency, there's a lot of fish, there's a lot of clients. So, and he's happy, you know, he's getting fat, so he's growing, and then suddenly this other shark comes in this ocean, and says, oh, there's a lot of fish here, and another shark, and another shark. And in the end, there's so many sharks in this little ocean, that they start competing for the same amount of fish. And then they start attacking each other. And while they're attacking each other, you know, there's blood coming out, and the blue ocean turns into a red ocean. And I foreseen, uh, I, at the time, I foresee that, foresaw <coughs> that we had to grow the number of clients because the number of agencies were growing. So we had to grow the number of clients as well, it, growing the pie. And this was a really famous chat we had in Belgium with uh, uh, a lot of business leaders there. So said, we have to grow the total pie. And how are we going to do this? Well, this is basically what the Business Foundation did. Okay, so we have to attract new clients uh, and uh, increase the market share in Drupal as well. Uh, of, uh, increase the market share in Drupal as well, and it worked. It actually worked. There was a bit of friction with the community uh, uh, association because they were doing the, the Drupal Jam, and then suddenly we were really successful, and that spurred them into action, and they came up with a hell of a lot of ideas on uh, how to work for the local community. They started organizing training days, which was awesome. Uh, they started and invented the Splash Awards, you know, which was from a marketing perspective, awesome. You know, that brought in new clients and a lot of PR. Um, so after about two years, we decided to merge all together into the, oh, sorry. Yeah, okay. Um, so we merged them into one association. 
what really was important at the time um, <coughs> is transparency and trust. If you decide to chip in money, you know, me as an agency, I chip in money to the local uh, business association, uh, and they start promoting Drupal at an event, what's happening with the leads? You know, now who's, who's, you know, because you know, there's, there's large companies coming to the booth, and we made an agreement, and it's all about trust and transparency. What we did was we created flyers, I'll show you some examples later on, um, and we shared those flyers with all logos of all participants on it. And at the booth, we were not allowed to have our private business card with us, we're not allowed to give them away. We're not allowed to, to talk about the agencies we work for. Because at the time, at the booth, we were working for Drupal. So, and people were asking us, okay, so which agency are you working for? I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to share this because it's an open source thing and we are working for Drupal. And it worked. It worked really, really well. You know, even when participating agencies would join us, you know, at the event or passing the booth, they would not share their business cards. And we actually grew the pie. And more agencies came in, and more larger clients came in. <coughs> so the transparency <coughs> was really important, and then we merged into the merging two foundations into one after about two and a half years. And now this is the end result. You know, we have a massive community. We have huge events in the Netherlands where business and community are joined together. Um, this is the Drupal Jam. Um, and it's basically like a Drupal camp. Um, uh, we have sponsors involved, we have businesses coming in, having talks. So, let's discuss now the, the five benefits. So what are the benefits of having a community? Well, basically you all benefit. You know, um, when you get organized as a community, it creates transparency about who's doing what and for what purpose. I know in the UK there's been some discussions about uh, organizing events. There was a couple of agencies working together, organizing the event, and the rest of the community is like, hey, why are we not part of this? Um, there is also been discussions about the number of camps in the UK being organized at the same time. You know, so they started competing with each other over, you know, camp issues. You know, that's not how you work together as a community. So the transparency um, and the open source of it, that's really important. So Drupal can be promoted through a variety of channels and financing this can be done via local associations. So the second one is growth. <coughs> um, I was telling you about this before. Um, growth is needed you know, uh, from various perspectives. Um, and the first perspective, you probably think like, okay, you need growth in terms of revenue and that kind of stuff. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about number of developers, which is really important. You, we have to grow the number of developers. Um, I see a few gray people here, gray hair. I'm getting gray as well. So we need new people coming in, you know, with, uh, with new ideas, fresh ideas, talking about new technologies, how can we... Uh, 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 have React and Drupal work together, all that kind of stuff. So yes, we need to foster and grow the community, you know. Um, so we do not age as a community. Um, growth can be or realized through by organizing local tech events and promote Drupal at local tech events. Uh, growth by recruiting new developers by organizing tech talks. You know, there's a lot of ways we can generate growth from a central point through a local <coughs> association. So there's a lot of benefits for the, the community, for the agencies, and for Drupal as a whole. Because if new developers come in, that means new contributions will come in as well. All right, so knowledge about what works and what doesn't work can be shared amongst local associations as well. So we can foster growth around Europe or globally. So this is interesting as well. If, if for example, you know, we, we started in the Netherlands with the Special Wars and it was a huge success. You know, and that resonated into uh, Denmark and now Germany is organized Special for the second time Austria. together with Austria. So, and 
the special awards, um, that basically generated a lot of PR for the projects that were sent in. And we had a lot of happy clients, you know, that's what everybody wants, happy clients. But we had proud developers as well. And, and I still remember when I was at the first uh, Drupal Smash Awards we organized in, in Hamburg. And I was sitting there and I uh, saw this, um, and this huge website built for, I think it was Fitness First or, yeah, it was Fitness First. And I was like, are they on Drupal? That's an awesome project. And I was really proud. And remember that, it was everybody within, you know, in their room looking at the special awards and all the projects came out and I thought, wow, you know, this, this proudness feeling that, that, that was fostered by and, and organized as well. Um, and um, so, yeah. Please uh, share that ideas throughout the local associations. Okay, I've been talking about, um, and this is my previous talk, about Drupal needs marketing. Um, I'm not going to show you the examples I gave in my previous presentation on how Drupal is represented throughout Europe, but if you look at local associations and the, the, the local communities on how they present themselves, uh, some are okay-ish, some are appalling, some are, um, well, the both not, not even promoting themselves, you know. Um, and they don't speak the same language, they don't resonate the same, um, uh, how do you say it, uh, uh, the same benefits for the end users, they don't speak to the different personas, uh, because we have different personas we're talking to. We're talking about the CMO, the CTO, we're talking about the developers, um, and everybody is doing something, but it's not orchestrated centrally, you know, and, and um, it's not shared throughout, you know, each country on what works and what doesn't work. So we should work together on a uniform presence so every country is telling the same story to its end users and the different personas. Really, really important. Okay, um, then there is efficiency in organizing events. Um, by creating a network of ambassadors throughout Europe, um, we can also create a network of event organizers. So, this morning, I heard uh, those keynotes, you know, and that was a really touching story, you know. Um, in two weeks' time, there's a Drupal camp in Essen. You know, why can't I get that same story, you know, over there? Um, there are tech talks. There's a lot of technology talks, you know, here today. You know, and every camp, developers start creating new presentations over and over and over again, which is not really efficient. So how cool would it be, you know, you're from Pakistan, you know, and you organize camp in Peshawar. Yes. So you have this awesome talk, for example, at your camp, and you share this, you know, throughout, through the ambassador network of the local association. Hey, I gave this awesome talk about this subject, and a local developer from either Germany or the Netherlands or France or Italy says, it's a cool talk. I adopt the same talk. It saves me a hell of a lot of time, so I can sh spend it on, on contributing code. But I don't have to make the whole presentation myself. But this guy in uh, Pakistan, or a girl in, in Pakistan already, made it for me, and I'm going to tell that same story because I believe in it. So sharing presentations could be a way of sharing knowledge and make it a lot more efficient than it is right now. So. Uh, so we don't have to produce similar presentations uh, the whole time. All right. Um, then there is um, uh, attracting talent by organizing and promoting training days. Um, we organized training days in the Netherlands. We had about 200 students from uh, local universities uh, attending. And we had a training day about, okay, how to set up your Drupal uh, uh, installation. You know, how to... Uh, well, start programming your first module. You know, how, how to do the basics. Um, I'm not a programmer, but I've been listening, and it's a hurdle for a lot of developers to start with Drupal. You know, and by organizing training days, you can get them over that first hurdle and get them enthusiastic. 
You know, so this is a new way of a local community can create standardized materials to attract new developers, organize training material and training days, and showcasing, of course, you know, um, uh, what cool projects can be realized with Drupal. So yeah, training, really important. And if we organize it centrally, you know, if the UK, oh no, there was a story, Moldavia or something, they organized trainings, you know, really cool trainings, you know. If we can share this through the local association throughout the world, you know, uh, that's drawing the community. That is drove as a whole. Yeah, and I was talking about it, but I, I was telling you I have five benefits of organizing uh, a local community, but there's six, and I already told you guys, it's the Splash Awards. Um, yeah, Splash Awards is definitely amazing. You know, the, the stuff that happened when we started organizing the Splash Awards in the Netherlands, the, the feeling of pride amongst the developers, the, the, the pride uh, amongst the clients, and I told this in my previous presentation, um, we won at the time as an agency uh, the special awards for DHL. And DHL was so proud, like, oh wow, we won an award. Okay, we invented the award ourselves, to be honest. But we had an independent jury actually going through all the projects, and we won. So it was really cool. And then um, they published, you know, uh, the fact that they won an award in their global newsletter. And suddenly the whole world knew that the Netherlands, or the Benelux, was running on Drupal. And because the rest of the world was running on Adobe. You know, and then it became interesting. You know, then BOM, where the headquarters is, became interested in what we were doing. So, and yeah, we're, we're still running on Drupal and they're, they're really proud of all the successes we generated uh, for a hell of a lot less money than uh, uh, we shall spend on Adobe. So, yeah. Um, so, Splash Awards has a lot of benefits on it, and I suggest start organizing it. You know, uh, do it. But you need sponsors for organizing it locally, and then it's wise to have an association so all the money goes into the association, local association, with a bank account, so it's all transparent. So, please start organizing it. It's awesome, and you'll love it. All right. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example. This is the German Business Association in Germany. Um, basically, um, this is what they state on their website. We have the deepest need to work with the community to create ways to empower Drupal and expand the opportunities Drupal developers use and for, for Drupal developers, users and companies. We consider a functioning and healthy Drupal market to be an essential part of Drupal's continued adoption in all areas. Likewise, we understand Drupal companies as an important integral, integral part of the Drupal community which could not exist without each other in its, in its successful form. So what they're stating is, yes, we're part of the community, but there's also business needs. And we have to closely work together, and they're doing it. You know, they have regular uh, talks with the local, because in Germany, the business uh, community, uh, the business association was started besides the local association. There was already a community association, so now there's two associations, but they're communicating, which is good. And, but there's a stronger focus on, on business in, uh, in Germany. So when you look at the purpose, um, the German business, uh, the Drupal business, Germany eval, sorry, <laughs> <coughs> Uh, sees its purpose in, promote, in the promotion and dissemination of the uh, open source content management system Drupal in Germany. The Drupal business Germany EVAL works closely with the existing organizations such as Drupal EVAL to complement them meaningfully. So there it is. They are working together with the, uh, the community focused uh, association with a different focus. So what are the goals? It's a whole list actually and it's, it's Challenging the marketing of Drupal as a business solution, representing the Drupal business community at trade shows, conferences, and other events, the promotion of Drupal for potential customers and influencers, promoting collaboration between the general Drupal community, Drupal users, and professional service provider, as well as national and international associations that specifically or generally support or promote Drupal, um, the support for further education and training measures in the Drupal environment 
the provision of marketing materials to position Drupal in the commercial market, the direction and support of events to increase the market share of Drupal as well, uh, as well as the operation of internet sites for marketing of Drupal and Drupal service providers. So, if you decide to set up a local foundation, I would take this list as a guideline. This, this is good. This is good stuff they're doing. Okay, so when we started, I remember this, um, we kicked it off because there was a uh, Symphony Con. Um, and Symphony Con offered uh, uh, the, uh, the business association to have a booth over there to promote Drupal, which is good because then you can attract new uh, potential clients and new developers. So we created a, uh, a booth which basically told about, okay, what is Drupal um, and how can you promote it so it's, it's flexible, it's open source, it's innovative, latest version. And we had flyers as well. So telling about what Drupal is. Um, and this is basically the, our first, well, uh, basically way of, of communicating Drupal um, from a commercial perspective in, uh, in Germany. So we had a lot of, uh, of quite a few agencies uh, stepping in from day one. Uh, so there's about nine of them. Um, and we had a flyer, and all of those agencies basically chipped in money so we could create the booth, send the booth over to, uh, to Berlin, where SymphonyCon was, and we handed out these flyers. So yeah, if you're looking for a Drupal agency, yeah, just pick one, just uh, uh, and Google them, find them, and see which is uh, uh, preferably uh, uh, the, the agency of choice. So that, um, we also uh, had a website, uh, www.drupalagenturen.de. This is where we started with. We now have a different website because we chose not to um, uh, become a association, but a Verein, which is a uh, foundation in English. Okay, so, so here we are at the booth. So this is our, this is our first uh, um, uh, promotion effort at uh, the SymphonyCon, and then we started organizing the Splash Awards. Um, this website um, is built by Imo Internet in German and is now being distributed. Um, is it back, going back to the Netherlands as well now, or is it going to Denmark? No, but it is open, like everybody can just take it. Yeah, it's open source, so if you want to organize the Splash Awards, it's open. So we start sharing already the website for the Splash Awards and the tuning behind it. Um, and then we had the Splash Awards, and I have pictures from the Netherlands and Germany mixed together. Um, it's, or is it just the Netherlands? No, th no it's just, I think it's a combination. Um, it's, it's a cool event. You know, we had clients there all being pumped up. It was like, okay, yeah. Uh, we had dinners before with the clients that we moved in. And uh, yes, are we going to win it? Yes or no? And we had Jam, uh, Jam promoting it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just a fun night. And you'll see a lot of really cool work passing by. Uh, because I'm not checking the website of my competitors every day, you know, what kind of cool project. But you just sit there and see it pass by. And everybody was really, really proud. And yeah, so it's a, it's a hell of a party, um, and uh, I would suggest uh, to organize it yourselves. All right. And it will generate like, free publicity. You know, this is the Thunder won uh, a special award uh, uh, as well. Thunder is an open source platform uh, built by um, Burda. Burda. Yeah, it's a large publisher. They have a distribution, uh, a publishing distribution. Uh, and they won a special award for it, and they published it. And it's re the, the reach they have, you know, as a media company, was, was outrageous. So this is cool work for Drupal as well. So I would suggest, if you're up to it, to start talking to your local community and talk about setting up a local association. Um, the reasons I already gave to you. There's, there's, there's more than five reasons to do so. Um, and the good thing is, is if you get organized um, and you create transparency and you start collaborating, you know, then you won't have fights amongst Drupal camps. You know, 
Um, for example, now there's a group of camp in London. In two weeks' time, there's one in Germany already. You know, uh, we should be have a centralized point. You know, that, that, that's being pointed. Okay, when are you going to organize your camp? Because London is competing now with Essen in, in Germany. You know, that's not a good thing. You know, um, you know, so if we, we can centralize it and organize it in a, in a better way, and this can only be done by local associations. So I suggest, please start setting it up. If you need any help, um, you can talk to me. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about setting up a local association, like the Dutch Drupal Association or the German Business Verein, uh, and how we promote the Drupal, uh, Drupal at local tech events and organize the special awards, Please contact me. I can get you in contact, for example, with Buddy or with Baris, who's been doing it in the Netherlands. Um, so yeah, just just contact me, and uh, uh, we'll help you set it up locally, and uh, we'll be happy uh, to help you with that, and provide you with all the tooling like a website template and special words templates and uh, and material. That's it. Thank you very much. Questions? Or should we just let's do it? So, any questions regarding setting up a local community or local association? No. Can I ask a question to the group? Yeah. Is any are, is anybody here from any local community? You in Pakistan? Yes. My question actually was: uh, Should we have a country-wise association, or because Pakistan is a large country? Yeah. Or province-wise, uh, so one is better, or we should uh, de uh, uh, be more uh, granular into it. Um, I would suggest. Um, I I've been to Pakistan, um, and yes, there are regional differences between Balochistan and northern Pakistan, and um, uh, I would suggest to have one local association. Even for India, for example, and India is even bigger than, than Pakistan. Uh, United States, that's a different question, you know, that's it's huge. I would suggest to have one authority association that helps local user groups in organizing events and uh, centralize it. That's what I would suggest. So one association per country. Um, you talked a lot about the sharing between the Netherlands and Germany. Yeah. Did that come about, you know, at an individual level, or is there some kind of? Well, that that was. Uh, <laughs> 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 That's <coughs> it started at at at, at Drupal. Drupal Con Barcelona. Drupal Con Barcelona. I had an idea, and, and uh, we we were chatting, um, and it was like, okay, oh hell yeah, let's do Germany, um, and we did it. And now we're sharing a lot of information. And now we're thinking like, okay, what countries are next? And can we do this globally? This is what we are talking about, you know. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's awesome. If we, can, if we can do this worldwide, wow, that'd be awesome. So then we can have like, uh, and talk to, okay, uh, for example, you know, I, I've created um, a persona interview for the CMO, and Chief Marketing Officer, and I've written a story about it. And I can send it to you in Pakistan and say, hey man, I've, I've written this, you know, I've published it on the Dutch website, uh, I've translated it, and it could be interesting for your local market as well. And you can tailor it to your local needs because you have to, because there's cultural differences and stuff, and other language stuff. But we can start sharing on a professional level. Now we're just doing something, you know, and everybody's thinking, okay, yeah, we need a website, and, and, and I just, oh, just create a template, and, and I'm going to promote my camp here. Uh, yeah, but that's more than just promoting a camp, you know. So, so yeah, so let's start sharing. Let's, let's do it. All right, so, so who's been involved within a local association? I have another question. All right, you've got a question. Cool. I have a question. When you first set up with a few companies, how did you agree on how much you could change? Was everybody pitching the same? Or yeah, the yeah. Um, that's, a, that's a really interesting discussion. Uh, we had a discussion at the time, said, so, okay, should bigger companies pay more? Uh, we decided not to. Um, the reason why 
is we want it to, um, because if I pay more, do I get a bigger logo? That's the question that we have, you know. And um, is my logo on top because I pay more? And we want us to get rid of all the discussion. It says, okay, everybody's paying, in the beginning, 500 euros a year. Um, in Holland, that's an okay price. I don't know in other countries, you know, what the acceptable level of money is, but uh, it was 500 euros. Um, we are now a couple of years later, and uh, I think it was about four weeks ago, we had an agency leader dinner. Um, currently, in the Netherlands, there's 50,000 euros in the bank account, because profit was made actually on the camps. And they were saving money. Why? Because now we can start hiring a full-time PR agent, you know, to do PR and marketing for Drupal professionally. Because, you know, we are just a bunch of open source geeks, you know, who are, I'm, I'm, I'm not a geek, but marketeer, open source marketeer. Um, but I do this on a voluntary level. But we have now so much money come in, and then it says, okay, but okay, then we have 50,000 euros, but after a year, you know, that's gone. And then we said, okay, let's raise the bar. Okay, who, who's interested in paying a thousand euros? We are with over 40 agencies now, 35, 40 agencies. So, okay, so if we chip in a thousand euros, we can hire somebody part-time to do promo. And we all benefit. And it's an independent person as well, so awesome. So we're raising the bar and, you know, becoming even more professional. Well, if somebody that can afford the 1,000 euros anymore. Yeah. Was it this unanimous or did you just bring the same? Sorry? How do you manage the ranking of it? We, we just sat down with all the agency leaders. And we everybody agreed. Everybody agreed. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's not into effect yet. You know, it has to go, you know, it has to be written down and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's how we did it. So it's basically a vote. This is a very sensitive topic. I know. Because that. you want, yeah, and, and, yeah. I, and like, I think that we are going to have a meeting now in the Drupal uh, Germany Business Foundation, and we are going to be talking about like the prices, and, and then this is just always yeah. like we can never decide on it because we don't know what is the yeah. correct solution. Yeah. Um, to start with, you can only just agree with the group that you're working with. Yeah. And then as soon as it grows, you have to adapt. The, the thing is, is that. Um, you have to match your, your goals as an association with the funding you have. Because if you state in your bylaws that you are going to represent Drupal at large events, and the largest event, for example, in Germany um, will cost you around, well, a minimum, I think, of 50,000 euros. So it's a dream to be there if you chip in with 12 agencies uh, 500 euros. You know, then you have 6,000 euros and you can't be at large events. But it could be a wish or a goal you want to reach in the end. So you have to look at what your business goals are and how you're going to achieve them. Because the same thing you can do is that you can also, uh, uh, for 6,000 euros, you can buy uh, AdWord campaigns in general about Drupal and guide them to a Drupal standardized page to tell more about Drupal and guiding the potential buyer in his customer journey towards the right agencies. Different ways to spend your money, um, but difficult discussions. I would suggest to start small. We're starting in Germany, we've started small as well. One event, simply come, 50 euros each. Roll up banner, going to, to Berlin. And we just sat there and it, it, it kicked it off. Yeah. And then we started organizing these flash awards, and I think we charged... 50 euro per nomination. 50? And 25 euro for two convention flash awards to, to participate. Yeah, so... Sponsors. Sponsors, yeah. And, and also what we are thinking a lot is, for example, you know, he was talking about the NESCO, which is a large uh, conference in Germany, which is really expensive, like yeah. no way that the little one next internet and, and one shoe that, you know, little companies would ever be able to be there with a booth. But together, we can be there with a the booth. Yeah, we did, we did this from the Netherlands, you know. We, so, yeah. uh, uh, over 40 agencies joined and chipped in money to be, uh, uh, to create a Holland house at the Mexico in Germany, yeah. So uh, the, the dream would be, like somebody said, like why do we not crowd, uh, crowdfund a sponsorship for Drupal Europe? Yeah. Like some agencies that are just smaller and they cannot 
do the big sponsorship, but why do we not just do this together, ten of us? Yeah. And then we can actually have the booth and we just, you know, yeah. so we do a program together and together we are stronger than as an individual. Yeah. That's the idea behind it, that's what we are trying to focus on. Yeah, question. So, I mean, you keep, um, I think you mentioned if we do this, so I'm actually surprised it's not there. Because, uh, I mean, I've been having challenges trying to, get, to fix that at a local community. Cool. So, I was always thinking maybe I'm the one not finding the resource, but it does seem even the organization of it is, I think you're discussing it now. Is there a timeline for that? Is there a timeline for organizing and setting up? Um, setting up what you're talking about, you know, um, getting templates out, getting. Oh, we have we have templates already. So for the, uh, uh, the the website, we have templates for the special awards, uh, and more. It needs to be done. You know, uh, the, the flyers even. You know, we can. Uh, that's directly with the German association. We have to come to your website. It's not. Yeah. At the Drupal level, like Drupal you know? No, no, it's not on Drupal.org. Special awards have yeah. been created as part of on Drupal.org. Yeah. That is like we're trying to boost it there, trying to see if that yep. works out. Yeah. So, um, yes, there, there are now talks going on. It's okay. How can the Drupal Association be a part of this and Drupal.org? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's that's discussions we're focusing on. Yeah. Any other questions? Shall we do it? Yeah. So, yes. from, from which country are you? I'm from well, I'm originally from Kenya. Kenya, and you live in? I live in London. Live in London. Is there a local association yet? We, we are trying it. It's, it's a bit slow, but we're trying. We're trying our best. Cool. Excellent. You guys? Why? And local association yet? No. Are you guys going to do it? We are looking into it for already quite a while. We tried it two years ago. Yeah. Years ago, and we, like the whole community, pretty dissolved on the how, how much should we pitch in. Yeah. And that, 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 my question comes from that because we had a huge discussion. Yeah. And some people were, I'm just a one person agency. Yeah. I can't pitch in anything. And so, but we are thinking yeah. about it still. Yeah. yeah. Look at the Drupal uh, Germany, the community foundation. They have, it, I think it's 250 euros if you're a company and 50 euros if you're an individual. Yeah. So they have an organizational membership, or organization, and an yeah. individual membership. Yeah. Uh, that, that will buy a solution, yeah, and then uh, everything in German. Like, yeah. yeah. The problem is also it's all in German, so how should you find it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, yeah, we're from Romania um, at the moment. So I'm I'm part of the Drupal, the Romanian Drupal organization for uh, a month or so. Cool. Yeah, uh, I'm just getting my hand. In. We'll see how this, how this goes. All right. And at the moment, we have two major events in Romania, so we have Drupal Camp, Transylvania, and then um, Hack Camp. Yeah. One is the inclusion, the other one is in Bucharest. Uh, the main problem I would say is that the, the organization is in the capital city, so it's in Bucharest. But then again, you have these this small companies that are not in Bucharest. Yeah. yeah. So what are we going to do with the smaller companies? We'll you, you can still promote them. You know, uh, you can promote the basically all the companies. It's just that you need a seat. Um, we, for example, um, the seat in the Netherlands, I think it's in Harlem. It's not even in the capital, you know, but that's just an address we have. Um, but events are organized throughout the Netherlands by the local association. So, and they support the user groups, they support uh, the tech talks and promote the tech talks. And yeah, so, so they do a lot of promotional effort, you know, in, in, uh, in fostering the community and then local events. So the location is, is, is I think, to, to my knowledge, not really a problem. It's just that you need a place to register the association, but could be anywhere. major critic in the region is that you have an association but then again that association is not that focused or implied in the local community so you just promote yourself as an association I don't know if I made myself uh, understood but for example in the case of Transylvania yeah. so the event was organized 
under the logo of the Magnetical Campus Association. Yeah. But then again, it was a company that organized it, and they just needed the association to have all the procedures. So, are, but that was are you saying that the company, that company was taking the benefits, commercial benefits of organizing an event and promoting it via the um, uh, association? Is that they, they were they were taking the benefits, but then again, they had little to no support from the association. Oh, yeah, okay, you will do that. That's, yeah. Okay, so, uh, so, so that, that's why a strong organization, you know, um, in which more community members are working closely together, you know, um, um, with no direct involvement from a company, you know. And, and we said um, in the Netherlands, okay, events are being organized, um, but it's always saying, okay, this is sponsored by, you know, not organized by, it's sponsored by. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that, that was the problem in the Netherlands. You know, the Netherlands was sleeping at the time, so um, they were organizing the the, 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 the Drupal Jam, but there was not a lot of things happening. You know, and I said, okay, well, if you don't do it, you know, I, we just set up a separate foundation, yeah. um, and that basically kicked them into, you know, fast forward mode. Maybe school tried to do that. I don't know. I know. So, so in Germany, I. Expect you know to, to merge within a couple of years anyway. I expect that to happen. So yeah, but like but just for that, like there is a difference uh, of also what you can do as a non-profit foundation depending on the country that you're working in or you're you're doing this in. So in Germany, like there's so much limits on our the community foundation or the community association. Yeah. But there are certain things that they cannot do. For example. You know, do a lot of events and have commercial effects. So therefore, we had to put the create the business foundation yeah. just for that pur pur purpose too. So there's also like all the legal problems that you have. Yeah. And then you have to figure out how that works in your country. Like, do you need for the non-profit the non and, and profit status? Yeah. Because we all like. It took us took half a year, I think, to figure it out. Yeah. Even well, we were even told like for the business foundation, just do a normal company. But then we said, like, no, it's too difficult because then we're going to have shareholders and we yeah. don't want that. But that's just too complicated. Yeah. So, but so we have yeah. a profit foundation, we have a non profit foundation. Because a non profit foundation has, like, by law, you know, that they can only do certain things. And for example, certainly not organize lesson works and promote companies and cases. No, we're not allowed to. So therefore, that, the profit foundation needs to do that. Yeah. That depends on probably a lot. Cool. I gotta finish it up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. My time is up, but I'm still around until about five, and then I have to get my airplane later on this evening back to the Netherlands. Unfortunately. Are they flying? Yeah. I I, I, I hope they're flying. Otherwise, uh, I have to fly myself. So so thank you very much. Any uh, <laughs> question? I'll be around. Just uh, uh, or just contact me. All right. Cheers. Tickets. Tickets. Yeah, tickets. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Free tickets. I'm leaving. Bummer. Oh, yeah, yeah, cool. To hear the story, yeah. Okay, so, so, so what is it to the Yeah.
something. Can I give you a little bit of your name? Your name is very hard to ask for me, sorry. Okay, I'm Michelle Bentel. Yeah. You used to have hockey matches? I'm so sorry. I don't know. I know it. I just let you finish. No, no, please. No, I just wanted to ask that we had an issue setting up the union. Yeah. So I'm talking about it. But I didn't know. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the main... Yeah. Uh, no, no, it's fine. <laughs> so, get it. Uh, so, so, the initial was like, the India, Yeah. And, and so, is this your connector? Oh, right. That's all right. I'll just use it then. Yeah. I think we're going to walk off with yours. Yeah. Last year, what yeah. happened was there were like a six, seven cities. They all trying to kind of organize a camp, and it all the like, date class. So that didn't happen. So Goa didn't happen last year. I know. Just yeah. because of this date. Yeah, and I started the conversation again. Let's ignore the money part. Let's ignore yeah. some kind of logistics part. Yeah. At least have someone representing from each city. Yeah. Just to sort out every year who's going to do when. That's good. Right. But that's the, that's the start of getting organized. Right. But, yeah. but like, uh, do we have, I mean, the, the thing that I wanted to ask is, one is, is there any process? Like, I know in individual countries, they have yeah. a different process and yeah. Uh, yeah. registering an association. Yeah. Yeah. But other than that part, like, uh, technically, how would you register as a company? Do yeah. you have any other guidance we should follow? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have. Okay. Yeah, I can. Um, let me see if I can, together with Boris, can, can help you right. um, uh, set it up. Uh, because. What you need is um, you need your goals, which I presented. Yeah, again. you kind of said take yeah. that one. Yeah, take that. These are your goals. This is your vision. I mean, yes, we want to work with the community because uh, it is really important to work together with with the local community and promote the local community. Um, but it's it's uh, and we want to get organized and not you know, in each other way. So so if you have separate you know, cities or areas that organize. Get one of those people in the board, right? Uh, so, right. So, so you can start working together, right? Yeah, okay. and then strengthen yourself, right? Um, and then, then there's a toolkit, you know, uh, start organizing special awards, start organizing training days, or, right. or things like that. All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's a person. So I'm, like I said, I'm, I, I'm kind currently based here, but there's yeah. a person who's attending even today. Yeah. He, he's working for a company in India, he's in India. All right. He was the kind of guy who initially started this idea of. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Cheers. Vijay, yeah. Michelle, yeah. I will try to follow you. I, I have your name on. Yeah, do you want my business card? Yes, yeah, sure. Sorry, we will both have to leave the
You want one? <laughs> Fine, thanks. <laughs> cool. All right, cheers. Take care. Uh, so you can put this one. Right. So they said it, once you take it, okay. once after it just start blinking. Mm -hmm. Because they said once after it start, once you take out, once after it start blinking, it does double press, then you get a.